Now, life's a beach unless you're homeless and live in Hawaii. Leaders in the island state are considering a new plan to help battle the homeless problem there, and they've decided a one-way ticket to the mainland might be their best option. See, in recent years, the homeless have all been flocking to Hawaii. And hey, why not? It's warm year-round, and the state has some of the best social services to help those in need. And census figures from January found that there were nearly 4,200 homeless people on the island of Oahu, which is about an increase of 15% from the same time last year. Now, state leaders see the homeless as a threat to tourism. Hawaii's number one industry, obviously. And I mean, who wants to see people down on their luck while they're laying on the beach and enjoying a pina colada, right? So, lawmakers are debating offering each homeless person a one-way ticket off the island. The plan would only send homeless people back to the mainland if they actually had a family that was willing to take them in. And proponents say the program would cost a lot less money than what it spends on food stamps and welfare payments. A three to five hundred dollar one-way ticket versus the $35,000 per year that it costs for each homeless person that gets the services from the state of Hawaii. So it seems that the plane ticket route might actually happen. But an attempt to, an attempt to not look so heartless, lawmakers are considering a more immediate solution. They want to set up safe zones on government land where the homeless could camp in tents and have basic sanitary facilities. Isn't that nice of them? Why not just drop the homeless people into the ocean? Obviously, you don't want them around. You know what I love? I just love that instead of trying to actually curb the problem of homelessness in America, everyone always just wants to ship them away and make them someone else's problem. I mean, come on, people. Can we just be a little bit more realistic? Speaking of which, affirmative action. That's somewhat of a touchy subject here in America. Originally designed as a form of remediation to eliminate the, quote, badges of slavery of African Americans in this country and to recognize their uniquely difficult journey. That's all according to Senator Jim Webb, who recently wrote an op-ed on this issue. But the thing is, it's also about creating diversity. And yet now that it applies to all people of color, to Asians and to Latin Americans that have only recently immigrated, some are asking if it's turned into a form of discrimination against all whites. So do the poorest white Americans whose families have lived here for centuries, maybe decades, do they always get cut in line by those that have just moved here? because of the color of their skin. Well, joining me is Jared Taylor, editor of the American Renaissance, and from our L.A. studio, Adam Lerman, organizer for Affirmative Action Group, by any means necessary. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Uh, we'll start here in the studio. To you, affirmative action, because people describe it differently, do you think that it's about reparations and about equality, or is it about diversity? Well, I think a more appropriate expression for it is not affirmative action, but racial preferences. That's what it is. It's preferential treatment of people because of their race. It's as simple as that. And if it was being done in the name of affirmative action, if it was being done for whites, it would be considered a national scandal. But because it's for blacks and Hispanics, it's considered okay. Now, the idea that it's reparations for slavery is completely nuts. Certainly in the case of Hispanics who've just immigrated, Africans who've just immigrated. And in fact, today, most beneficiaries of affirmative action are not ghetto blacks. They're people from middle class black families. Their parents benefited from affirmative action. How long is this going to go on? Now, Adam, what do you say to that? Do you think that this has nothing to do with, uh, with reparations and quite the opposite? It's racial discrimination? Um, I, I think it has to do with reparations only insofar as the, uh, the effects of discrimination and racism continue to exist today. I think um, that uh, to, to say that uh, we've moved past you know, discrimination, inequality, and racism just flies in the face of the reality of this country and every sociological, every socioeconomic statistic and measure of, uh, of inequality shows a growing chasm between minorities and non-minorities. And while it is true that there are white people in this country, obviously, who are not getting treated fairly, the answer is not, in my opinion, and in my organization's opinion, not to blame other victims of discrimination, but instead to build a united fight to fight for more resources for everybody. 
But in that case, why does race even have to be an issue here? Because really, it's about socioeconomic status. And we're saying that there are poor white people, right. poor Hispanic people, poor black right. people. So why is race yes. a, a part of affirmative action? Because, right. you see, that's not the way it works at all. Was when, people, when people have tried to use poverty as a proxy for race, because they say, oh, we can't get into this race business, what they find is they're helping out white people. And they're not getting the kind of yeah. racial diversity, which is the great image that we want to bow down to at this point. The, 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 truth is we, the truth is that we have to take account of race because racism actually still shapes everyday life in America. Everything in this recession shows that black Americans are suffering worse from the recession. If you look at the admission statistics to uh, colleges and universities around the country, you see a decreasing percentage of minority students on these campuses, not increasing um, as the opponents of affirmative action would, would like us to believe. So let's look at the facts of what actually discrimination inequality is in this country, not what people wish it were. First of all, it is a big mistake to say just because there are differences in achievement or representation, it's a consequence of racism. Look at the National Basketball Association. It's 77 percent black. Is that because whites are being discriminated against? No. One of the great no. false arguments of the proponents of affirmative action is to say, point to any difference and say that had to be discrimination. Most of the time, that is completely false, even if it were discrimination. But do you believe that yeah. racism is not a problem? that still exists in America? I think racism is by no means this overwhelming, terrible obstacle to blacks or Hispanics. Why are so many Hispanics coming here if racism is such a problem? Why is it that there are more Africans who have immigrated voluntarily to the United States than ever came in the slave trade? If this country were just yeah, brimming with racism... I would invite racism, you to go to the city of Detroit and ask them brimming, if they think racism if, is a problem. Well, yes, the city of Detroit, they've got a black mayor, a black police chief. It go is into East black. L.A. and it's see if it's a problem black, in East so. L.A. Yes, East L.A. Is is likewise run by Hispanics. Who are they going to blame it on? Some distant white man. This is the constant yeah. refrain. Oh, it's not my fault. It's that ugly, nasty white man that did it to me. When are non-whites no. going to grow up, is what I'd like to know. When are they going to take responsibility for their own situation? Well, pretty soon, when they're going like to be... When are people like you going to start misrepresenting the truth Mis well, about at some what point, America at some looks point, like? Yeah. I, what I think, you know, what you also need to address is uh, California is a perfect example. That's mm. a state where minorities are going to be the majority of the population it pretty soon. Is. It and already California, is. you're right, it yes. already is that way. The rest of right. America is going to reflect that pretty soon. So mm. this is going to be the reality. Well, now, how is that going to change the playing field? Then, well, you know, at that point, are we going to see fewer whites getting into universities because there's fewer of them, or are they still always going to have the upper hand? At this point, the way so-called affirmative action works, the, high, the idea that it's somehow compensation for what happened 150 years ago is rubbish. It's simply a, ma a means of gaining advantage at the expense of others. It's gaining advantage at the expense of others. Now, when blacks and Hispanics become a majority, if they want to legislate the law, Laws that it even go further to discriminate against whites, there'll be nothing to stop them. But let's face it what it is. It is seeking advantage at the expense of whites well, and Well, I doubt they'll Asians. be legislating the laws, let's, considering we, that they'll probably never concrete. get to be a lawmaker, because you know that it takes a lot of money to be, uh, get into political office. Right. Well, but, <laughs> Adam, what do you consider well, uh, affirmative action, can, then? Can we, let's look at the, at the city of Los Angeles and the state of California. I like that. Let's be concrete and talk about some truth. Um, the city of Los Angeles, the public schools here are 70, 75% Latino, the public schools. Yet if you go onto campus at UCLA or any of the larger, um, you know, uh, elite universities here in the state of California, Latinos are, are wholly underrepresented, and that's not changing. That's getting worse. In fact, in California, we don't have affirmative action. It was banned by a you know, state constitutional amendment in 1997, Prop 209, that, in fact, my group is now suing in federal court to overturn, because we've seen what 10 years of the ban on affirmative action has meant for the people of California. In a majority-minority state, in a majority-minority city, you go across the street here to UCLA, three years ago, there were less than 100 black freshmen on that campus who were not on athletic scholarship. You tell me that's equality. You tell well, me that's what America's supposed to be. What you're saying, you're talking about quotas. It's pure and simple. And you're saying that because they're not as many, they have to be beneficiaries of, of, of racial discrimination. You're saying without How do we measure equality? Benefit, How without, do we measure justice? We measure justice by treating everybody equally. You're saying we can't treat them equally. We have to give them a leg up, give them a boost, give them extra points on their scores. That's 
exactly what you're saying. More points for minorities because of the color of their skin, even if they just immigrated yesterday. That's well, what I you're think, saying. I think the big question here also, uh, like both of you mentioned, is how do you measure equality? Is diversity necessarily uh, the word that represents equality, or is this some other American notion that isn't really taking into account, come on, this is, uh, we're in a recession, socioeconomic barriers definitely exist in this country, and um, I think we have to yes. continue this debate. I want to thank you, gentlemen, both for being Anytime. here tonight, but we will continue to discuss no. this later on in the Thanks show. Thanks for having us. My pleasure.